to First Friday in downtown York. Yay! Yay. <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, I'm Sunny Hunsinger. I'm the executive director of Downtown 8. We are the organization that works to enhance and encourage revitalization in downtown York. And when we talk about revitalization in downtowns, we talk about walkability and creating a sense of place. And that's exactly what we're here to celebrate tonight. Uh, I guess about a year ago, Joe Wagman with Better York spearheaded a project to increase and improve the walkability by adding some bump outs so that pedestrians could feel more safe and more comfortable. We've already noticed after in the first month a calming of the traffic, a respect by vehicles for the pedestrians crossing the street, believe it or not. It's actually safe to cross the street midpoint between North and, and Philadelphia. So that's the walkability, that's the pedestrian friendliness. Then Joe also, in conjunction with Judd Lando and Jeff Lau from Insurance Services United put a challenge to the businesses on North George Street. They came up with an anonymous donor of $10,000 and challenged the businesses to match that $10,000 so that we could commission artists, local artists that you'll meet tonight, to create public art reflective of our industrial heritage. We've got an, an enormity of, of local artists who use all of these very interesting mediums to celebrate the industrial art and design heritage and culture in downtown York. So, how we're gonna do this is we're gonna unveil one piece at a time. We'll walk from here all the way down to the square. And I'm gonna let Pat Sells talk a little bit about the process as um, and he sort of facilitated this whole thing working with the artists and then I'll let each one of the artists say a little bit about their inspiration and their medium and how they how they came to, to pull the art together but, but I do want to mention that this was a very collaborative effort we had Better York we had the city of York we had the county of York participating salvaging creativity downtown Inc this was truly a collaborative effort and not to mention the artists who gave more than enough of their time and talent to these projects. So with that, I'm gonna turn it over to Pat and let him talk a little bit about how the project worked and went from start to finish. Well, um, this is an idea we hope kind of grows on York and continues to go block by block. Um, we're gonna put forth some ideas on how to encourage more artists, uh, more businesses, local universities to engage in this process and collect up materials and start telling the story about York's identity. It's hidden. Um, we are still a manufacturing town and behind all these buildings, things are being made. There are people with unique skills inside each of these industries doing something that only that person knows about it and their surrounding family. So the idea is to take these materials, whether it's of history or uh, current manufacturing and bring them out, set them on our streets and put that story out in the public eye to uh, you know, give us a, a bit of meaning and, and something to talk about. Um, so this, we started at Beaver Street and we did the streetscape, the benches, bike racks, trash cans, and then we moved on with that example set and um, asked for ideas from local artisans. We had six people who we sort of handpicked at this point and they went out and sourced materials and suggested ideas and presented them, they were reviewed. And uh, so the next step will be to reach out a little bit further and uh, see if we can get a program rolling where this will continue block by block. Um, so that's the idea and I guess... <laughs> you don't have to, but... <laughs> Stay up here with you if you want. Okay, hold my hand. <laughs> Um, I just really want to reiterate uh, what uh, Sonny was saying about the collaborative effort. I think it just is really a privilege to be included in the group that's come together and made this happen. Um, when I was asked to do something and needed to think about what might be um, a theme that would be in my mind, I thought about the fact that we have so much manufacturing in York and then I thought about out in the counties what I see when I'm driving around 
and started thinking about things like the quarries that are around York and just our manufacturing history. So my pieces um, utilize materials ranging from raw to processed materials and as I was working, um, I think I was thinking about this stretch of George Street and what came to mind as I was making some choices in how to um, arrange the materials that I work with, I started thinking about some of the architectural features of uh, the buildings that are in downtown York and that so many people comment on when they come to visit York. Um, we just have amazing architecture in this city. And I'd just like to thank uh, Downtown Inc. and all the organizations that have come together and made this opportunity available to me. Thank you. Sure. Thanks for coming out tonight. Um, I wanted to first say I'm really happy to be a part of this project, to be invited and to be able to uh, you know, put my concept in. Um, my work is mostly used, I, I mostly use farm parts. I'm uh, on the outskirts of the city, beautiful farmland everywhere as you know, and I uh, draw a lot of my parts from local farmers. And uh, I uh, love to change things into something else. It's one of my hobbies and part of my business. Um, I'm, I have a shop in Glen Rock, and if you ever get down that way, you'll see the little park next to my shop with a lot of the sculpture there. But um, I just uh, think that farming is such a big part of industry, too. And this piece itself represents bicycling and motorcycling and art and the farm industry. Uh, it's like, to me, the guy that was riding a bicycle before they had a lot of motorized vehicles, it was one of the first guys who thought, I'm going to put a motor on this thing, you know? And that's the feel that I get from it. And, uh, you know, I hope you all enjoy it. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, just Brent, to talk just about a couple of the things, sure. the parts that, that well, uh, it's very simple actually, uh, and I, I really like my pieces to be kind of simple and not really, uh, you know, that uh, something you have to really think about a whole lot. Just something you look at and enjoy. But um, this is a part of a new manure spreader chain, and we have uh, horseshoes make up the motor. The little spark plugs are made of the little handles that you turn the damper on your uh, potbelly stove with. Uh, there, um, we have a little horn here. This is part of a horse hame along with the whole frame, which Hametown was known for making thousands of pairs of hames for the Civil War. So we have some old parts in there, an old side view mirror off an antique car. Uh, the bird is basically a shovel with some horseshoes, and uh, these are actually part of the old little hand snips you use for cutting your grass. We have a pencil sharpener over here. Um, yeah, the handles are like the handles that you uh, you pump the spray cans for uh, for insecticides and farming, and uh, just a lot of little bits and pieces that go together and you know work to put together and make something else. And I, I like the fact that you have to take a double take, you know. It's, you know but it, it de definitely needs total restoration. It's not going to run like this. <laughs> but thank you. We're hoping to cluster more artisans, especially people who work in metal and materials that are unique to the York area. And uh, we're lucky to have Josh Seitzer out uh, with us near our complex in West Philadelphia Street. So I'll let Josh say a few things about this piece he made for In Front of Wagman. Okay. Can I take the uh, cover yeah, off? Sure. Okay. Can you cut it? All right. <laughs> Yeah, you have that. Well, all right. Oh, there you go.
Well, uh, I made this piece uh, with my father, Jim Seitzer, and um, for years now he's had a, um, a business or a side business called Seitzer Originals. And it's great because, um, like Bob, who's working with his son, this is kind of a generation piece, which is great. Um, my father's a jeweler, and we can trace our uh, background to six generations of metalworking in our family. I teach at York County School of Technology, so it's our local, um, I, I teach welding and metal fabrication there. And um, when Pat contacted me about this, I thought that it was a really cool opportunity to use some of the amazing scrap metal that I see all the time at JK Salvage. And they donated materials to the project, so I got to kind of pick through the yard, which is amazing. That doesn't happen in Philadelphia and Baltimore and other big cities, so it was great to stop by and, um, you know, on the weekends and stuff, uh, be picking out uh, pieces for the project. And so uh, 2012 is the Chinese uh, year of the dragon, so just a lot of the pieces, when they work together, it just kind of looked like a dragon. It was a lot of fun working with my dad and setting it up um, and just kind of seeing the way uh, the pieces came together, the, the project built itself. You want to say anything about it, Dad? Well, I'll just briefly say that uh, Josh grew up being my gopher and getting the, the wrenches when I asked for them and all that kind of thing. I got the opportunity to do that with him on these projects, and it was really cool. I just held the wrench and he did all the work, so. It was fun. Thanks. Okay, everybody, this piece is uh, um, also made of uh, farm objects. That, that's my thing, pretty much, with the, the pieces I'm able to find in my area. It represents uh, just so many times I you know go to work and it's like this beautiful rolling countryside and I'll look and see the animals and you'll see a cat sitting in the middle of the field this is a much bigger than life farm cat <laughs> and uh, it's made of a few different interesting pieces the same kind of thing as the motorcycle really but just put together in a different way as a found object metal artist I've always said you can make anything out of anything if you put your mind to it so uh, here we go And like the other piece, a lot of horseshoes are great filler work. Horseshoes are great. And there are so many furriers in the area, I can just go and get as many horseshoes as I want. So I love that. I try to make it a little interesting with bits and pieces of, uh, here again, we have horse hames, a lot of that around my way. Shovel head, plow parts, uh, glass eyes that I get from my friend around the corner. He's a taxidermist, and eyes are very important. Um, the whiskers are pitchforks, and uh, basically this guy is made out of, again, like manure spreader chain. The springs are from a combine, horseshoes, and there you have it. It's pretty simple, but it makes a statement. On a windy day, you can see it move a little. few more years than I remember but um, I had started down this road to do metal work and we looked around to find material and we showed up at a couple people's shops and got some phone numbers and I called this guy and he says where are you 
I don't even know who he is. I'm driving on Hunter Mill Road. Just, I'm driving on Weisberg Road, and there are two parallel roads in Maryland. And we ended up meeting out at our makeshift shop. And uh, Derek turned out to be sort of our, our guide in uh, starting this mess. Um, so I apprenticed with Derek and learned a lot of what I know, um, helping him out on projects and vice versa. So it's great to have him up in York and into the mess we've created up here. <laughs> so I'll let, let Derek take over. Thanks, Pat. I've created a piece here that uh, is made from a little heavier material than most people get a hold of. And I'm fortunate to have a building that has cranes in the, in the building so I can work with some pretty heavy stuff. I like to, uh, I like to build uh, creatures is my favorite thing to make. But uh, this piece is, um, I guess, typical uh, construction equipment. Like uh, I've used, what it is is tracks from a bulldozer and I've reconfigured the form of a bulldozer. Most people think of a bulldozer as the, the tracks lay horizontal and they turn around. This I've turned them upside down and changed the uh, the drama in the, in the bulldozer. So I'll unveil it and show what it, what it is. Thanks. It weighs about a ton. So the, the bottom part is a is an idler pulley, and the idler pulley on a bulldozer is the is the front pulley, and the back pulley usually drives the machine. And so these are the sprockets that drive the machine: two sprockets and then one half of an idler pulley. And what I've done is taken the tracks and cut the tracks so that they're you know they change and it makes uh, any number of what your imagination can see. So I guess that's what this one is. <laughs> so this piece is is a uh, this piece is I call it cartoon gears. And it's uh, made from parts of other construction equipment. It's made from, the base is made from parts of a Caterpillar uh, tractor of some sort. Caterpillar makes a lot of heavy equipment. I'm not actually sure what the bottom is. It was, it was heavy steel plate. And uh, it also weighs probably about 1,500 pounds, this piece. Uh, I, take the, I take the steel, like real thick steel and I have a shape cutting machine that I can draw, can draw shapes out and the, it has a seeing eye on the machine and it'll trace whatever um, whatever shape I make. So I take uh, some of this plate steel from Caterpillar equipment and I make the shapes I want and then cut it out on the machine and attach it with some of the innate shapes from the equipment. Now this piece also has wood in it and the wood is uh, it's locust wood so um, it'll it'll weather pretty well outside doesn't like to rot very fast and uh, I guess I'll just unveil this thing and let it go so this one is I wanted to make it instead of like round nice round gears I wanted to make them kind of uh, wanted to make them cattywampus so they weren't you know necessarily your typical round gear but I still wanted it to uh, represent the industrial idea of, of uh, you know processes working and uh, a lot of processes when you set them into motion they don't come out exactly round the way you want them to and so <laughs> this, is what, this is what I came up with that's cool Derek really good and the, uh, the the pattern of on the paint, it's got a grid pattern in the paint. So I, I did my drawing on an eight by ten piece of paper, and then I uh, I scaled it up from that drawing. So this grid is actually the scale scale marks. I took it from half inch equals a foot, or yeah, 
half inch equals a foot to um, to actual to six inches it equals uh, a foot or whatever that scale is. <laughs> anyway, however that works. Uh, this is my other sculpture that I worked on, and um, I just like to say that all the parts that are here and all the parts in the other one are locally sourced from York. And this one takes on a little bit more of a meaning, a more significant meaning in a lot of ways because, um, well, I, I'll just cut it and show it to you if that's all right, and then take the picture. So, uh, this, so, <laughs> the sculpture um, kind of came from uh, local parts in York, and so a lot of these pieces were made here and they were all sourced here. So, um, the apple actually, or the fruit, is actually significant in uh, mythology, particularly in Norse mythology. They talk about an apple as being um, a symbol for regrowth and rebirth. And so uh, it's something that the gods fought over and it became a prize and things. So um, the idea with this is when I was um, looking at Japanese bonsai specifically, they would take a stone and they would start a, a tree growing and um, the tree eventually would absorb, the, the root system would eventually absorb the stone that was underneath it. They would set a stone underneath it. And uh, it's something I've been taking a lot of pictures of in, in nature when we're going on hikes and stuff. Um, the root system, a tree growing where a tree really has no business growing, I think that's really fascinating. And um, despite all the history that we've had in York and things that people would say, you know, um, just adversity and things like that, there's new growth. And I think a lot of the uh, projects that we see here show that. We take something old, and something that I found in the junkyard, wh whose life um, expectancy or whatever is, is over with, these things are all worn out. If you look at um, particularly this wheel, this or this gear here, it's all worn out, and so it can't be used for uh, a dozer anymore. And so it's kind of interesting that it's really worn out, and so anyway, through this mechanism uh, grows new life, and. That's, that's basically it, and I, I'd just like to say thank you to uh, the people in York and the businesses who uh, supported us and uh, you know, gave me a chance to uh, make something interesting, and um, it's, been, it's been really great. Uh, you know, Wagman and CGA, they've, they're the ones who, are, it's on their site, but uh, there's a lot of other people too who are just excited about this, and uh, I, think that's, I think that's new growth. You have to be the genuine article if you want to uh, exist here in York. People are looking for authenticity, and um, I think that's uh, representative. Also, if you get a chance, uh, my wife is wearing a necklace that my dad made. He's a jeweler, and so um, it's, it's a small piece that's made out of watch gears, and uh, it's a really interesting thing, so uh, it's another Sites or Original piece. That's it. Thank you. So, on this piece, I get back to uh, my a little more of my uh, love for creatures, and um, this is kind of a strange proportion uh, rooster. I call it Ready Rooster, and I, I named it that because of the machine that I took apart was a uh, 1950s or 60s uh, era Alice Chalmers uh, corn chopper, and it was actually called an all crop harvester and um, so the skin of the the piece is the actual metal from the 60s and it, it's rusty on the inside but most of the outside is intact so I like to, to use old equipment and try not to buy anything new the legs are uh, parts of the John Deere manure spreader and uh, and then I used uh, just standard um, round bar for the kind of this the structure of the skin. So I will unveil this.
that's my intention. <laughs> this um, this plate on the bottom here came off of the uh, the good ship Comfort, which is the medical ship that they have down in the harbor in Baltimore. And uh, I know a guy in there. And when they redid the boiler there, they uh, they cut out a lot of steel, and that came off the of Comfort. So it it rode around in the Mediterranean Sea and wherever else it's been all around the world. That piece of steel right there. They're from um, a, a 1960s uh, Alice Chalmers all crop chopper. And uh, this this pipe had the had most of all the all the pipes had the original curve in it. I didn't make that curve. I just I find the pieces and then I use that that shape. And the, the toes are um, the toes are made from uh, bulldozer teeth. We're going to move on to a fantastic piece across the street, but I just want to say the bird that you see up here, which is also, again, made out of the local farm parts, your little hand tools that you'll do farming with, that we find on the old country roads. And the, the uh, farmers love to talk. Whenever you see a farmer by the barn, they're starved for attention. They're starved for conversation, rather. They want to talk to you. They'll find you some cool stuff. Uh, my son Bobby also was commissioned to do some pieces and his idea was to make small birds here and there all over the city or all over this project and maybe expand from that. But we have the bird up here which we finally have a body for the voice. Yay! Um, we're not going to go to all the little birds, but I can say this. Uh, there are a couple lampposts in front of the courthouse with the hanging baskets of flowers. You'll see um, a little branch coming off of that with a found object bird on two of the light posts up there and the brass light post on the bar beyond. Across the street, we have two on this big ugly pole here, the galvanized pole right on the corner of the strand. If you look below and above the, uh, the crosswalk signs, you'll see a couple little found object birds there done by Bobby Mashovic, my son. And there are a few more that we haven't installed yet. So uh, there are about, I think, uh, eight or nine altogether. One is sitting on the handlebars of my motorbike, by the way. And uh, you'll, you'll see those as you walk around, but we're not going to go to each individual one. But uh, hopefully there'll be some more popping up here and there, and, and you know, you'll catch one by surprise now and then. So um, after that, I just wanted to say, you know, I was watching the old movie the other day, I've watched a million times, A, Gre a Tree Grows in Brooklyn where the tree grows through the crack in the sidewalk and somebody kills it. And, well, we have a branch growing out of that galvanized pipe, so a tree grows in York, and let's hope that we can keep that growing. All right. Um, I guess I feel lucky that I was able to team up with Loran and talk her into getting involved in this this project and she agreed to do a bronze piece um, which is huge because it's a ton of work it's all made by hand it's sculpted in wax goes to the foundry um, they make molds they pour they break it out it's piecewise they have to weld the whole piece back together and finish it um, so uncover it here <laughs> self-explanatory, the thinker and the tin man, so she called it the tinker. And, um, going with the rest of the projects here, you, you know, you hear the, the, the ship Comfort. Um, you see 
the motorcycle from Harley, you hit the farm parts. All these pieces have a lot of embodied energy, ingenuity and in the people that made them. And there's a whole past and all the scratches and dents in the life that they lived before. So ask around, there's a lot of stories within every one of these to be told. These come from the uh, old Smurfit Stone Mill down by York College, part of the uh, Fournier dryer for the paper mill. So, Moran's piece and awesome. Yeah, just to wrap up, I don't want you to forget to take another walk a little bit farther down to see the rest of Bob's birds. Look up in the trees, look up on the, uh, the lamp posts. Make sure you check those out. Also, stick around, wander around, lots of things going on, lots of beer tonight for First Friday. Um, I want to say thank you again to Joe Wagman for spearheading the project, uh, salvaging creativity. The city, the county, all big partners in this project, and of course, all of these artists. One more round of applause for the artists. open air gallery. Uh, I'd invite you to run down to Beaver Street and if you haven't seen the pieces of art that are out there on Beaver Street, go down, take a look, and wait for more to populate the rest of the downtown. Thank you.